Stellenbosch Golf Club, established in 1904, host to the SA Open in 1999, and venue for five South African Masters tournaments. It's home to three Masters, three Sunshine Tour Musketeers, Oliver, Justin, and JJ. Tour man, proud of their roots. We get to travel all over the world and when you come back and you drive around, you see the mountains, you see the vineyards, go to the wine farms and, and just the scenery, you, you realize how beautiful a place it is. You know, so it's always great to come back home. I've lived here, I've only ever once ventured off and that was to college in the States and uh, I don't think I'd ever want to move anywhere else. It's just uh, it's a spectacular part of the world to stay in. There's a lot of good golf courses all around the area and um, yeah, it's just, it's home for me. I've grown up on this golf course. Uh, I putted here, I chipped here, I did everything here that I literally could. Um, came and walked around with my dad when he was playing with his mates and uh, I fell in love with it when I was small. I love the layout. Um, I love the competitiveness around here with everyone being here. So, I mean, it's, it's always testing you in, in each and every way. We've not just thrown these three together under duress. They are mates. Oh, he's done form. They support each other. Got a great golf course, great members. It's a good vibe in the club at the moment. It helps that JJ's also playing well and Justin's playing well. So, you know, kind of fire each other on. And um, we've got an internal competition here. Every week we joke about, yo, who's made the team at Stellenbosch and who hasn't made the team, you know. So you want to play well and I think it shows in the results. We've got decent facilities here. They've worked on it lately and uh, it's improved. So we've got all the time in our hands to come do what we need to do and, and improve our games. The course is spectacular. The facilities are also very, very good. They improve in year in and year out. And I think it's just a, it's a nice tight-knit community here amongst the, amongst the club. The members obviously are hugely supportive of us playing on the tour. It just makes for a little family here and we all get along quite nicely together. All three are in their early 30s. They turned pro within three years of each other. They go way back. We've been together since the junior years. We all came up through the Boylan Golf Foundation and then obviously Boylan uh, Interprovincials and so forth. So, I mean, we, we know each other's games well. We tend to help each other out when we're on tour. It's just nice having someone that, uh, that you get along with and uh, you obviously know well and it just makes it more comfortable when you're touring. It's uh, sometimes a bit of a lonely road that we take and uh, it's nice to obviously have mates that, uh, that you get along with. It's tough out there if you're on your own. So I don't actually know how people do it. You know, travel on your own, go everywhere. So it's good to have mates that you can travel with and, and have a good laugh with. Playing with these guys, I mean, Oliver is obviously the best golfer on our tour last year and uh, feeding off that, I can see myself and Justin doing better this year. To have them around practicing and, and playing golf obviously helps everyone because it's, it's, it's players that's just as good as you or even better and you always want to try and be better. So, I mean, playing with them, practicing with them obviously keeps your game sharp. JJ's spot on about him and Justin doing better this year. He's earned his second title and first since 2013 with victory in the Zanaco Masters. So I was worried the first two years that was my game good enough to take it to the next step to win twice on tour. It didn't go great those two years but then eventually when I sorted out my game and it, it came back to me that if you can finish top 10 you can probably win and if you've won on this tour you can win again and that's kind of the mentality that I had and that's what I tried to set up and, and got across the line again. I didn't enjoy the break of five years, but uh, <laughs> it was a little bit unexpected win for me, to be honest. Uh, obviously didn't have a great opening round, but came back with a 63 in the second round, which, which put me up there, and I, I really thought I could potentially win or finish top five. Um, the year before, I finished seventh, so that kind of motivated me to try and do better. I mean, last season I think I had like seven top tens or something, so I tried to win. I put the goal out there for myself to make, to get over that line. I just couldn't, couldn't get over that line. I mean, I finished second, I finished third. And so it was tough. It, it was a learning curve for me. And then to go out in the first event of the season and boom, win your first event. I mean, that kind of changed a couple of goals. And it, it's a good feeling to just knowing that you can get over that line for the second time. Anything you can do, Justin Harding just had to go one better. The winner of both the Investec Royal Swazi Open and the Lombard Insurance Classic. 
the whole 2018 season's really been pretty decent. I've played well since the beginning of January, so I've been knocking on the door for a while, so I'm happy to have won the two, and kind of going to try and follow in Ollie's footsteps from last year. I mean, he had a great start to the season last year, and to hung on, eventually got pipped by George and Eric there towards the end, but it's going to come down to the co-sanctioned events at the end of the season that everyone knows. But it's just a matter of keep grinding and putting yourself in position in every other event. My game's slowly beginning to evolve. I'm not quite as erratic as I once was. I'm playing more correct golf, if that makes any sense. I'm making less mistakes. I'm not taking too many gambles, chances, uh, hit or miss type stories. I think back in the day, look, it was fun. It was, at the same sense, it wasn't quite as consistent as it would have been now in this past eight to nine months. And ultimately, I think that's what, that's what I'm kind of striving for, is just to be a little bit more consistent and and be that type of person that is there week in and week out and giving the Oaks a bit of a charge, even if maybe I don't get the W or if I don't finish the top three, just having the Oaks maybe see me lurking there in the background type story. So I'm enjoying that perspective and I'm enjoying how my game's reacting and uh, quite excited for what the rest of the year holds. Justin points to the success of the Pioneer. Oliver Becker won three times last season. This term, though, it's taking time for things to come together. It's tough with this game, you know. You One moment you're on top, the next moment you don't know if you're going to make a cut again. It's very mental. It's been quite a, a long run and I've been playing a little bit of challenge to it, so I haven't really had time off in a, in a long time. And um, I think it makes a big difference also because you, you kind of lose that hunger to go and play and, and, and do well. And I think uh, a little bit of time off would do me good. With Oli obviously having a good season last year, he, uh, it's nice to ask a little bit of advice here and there, especially when I'm maybe asking for an invite or two overseas as well. He, uh, he's someone I can go to and uh, ask what it's like. He's a seasoned veteran over there, so to speak. Um, it's nice having the guys. It's, I mean, you're kind of spoiled really. You don't, you don't really think about it because you're so used to it over the course of the last 20 years. And there are plenty more to come. But eventually, when the pro careers are done, <laughs> what then? Oliver probably in business, I would assume. Oliver will probably just buy real estate and sell like he does now. <laughs> it's quite a few things actually. I studied accounting, so I've got a bit of financial background, but I'm thinking more towards maybe building or like property development would also be interesting. So I don't know. JJ loves his cars, so I don't know if he would be doing something with cars or in the motor industry. JJ drag racing, I don't know, he likes his fast cars. Rally car racer, who knows. I'd probably caddy, to be honest. Um, staying in the game, staying inside the ropes, trying to help someone else do, do as good as they can. Um, I like that. I've done it once or twice, caddied for Harding in the open, and uh, that was a different experience. That was seeing, seeing golf from a different perspective, and. Uh, I think that's probably what I would do, yeah. I know Harding studied some accounting story, don't know if he finished it, but jeez, I wouldn't know. Uh, Harding can't play rugby or anything like that, he can probably just play golf. And Justin, I don't know, if he didn't play golf, I reckon he'd be a bum. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> uh, probably, I don't know what Justin would do actually, he's always been interested in sport, maybe do like sport commentary or you know, researcher for a sports betting company or something, because he's always checking up in his facts and, and that kind of thing. So maybe something along those lines. I've got no idea. It's kind of been a decision I made since I was 16 years old. So we're going on a long time now and I haven't looked back since. It's uh, golf's taken me to just about every corner of the world. It's been hugely satisfying. Uh, ups and downs have been quite dramatic at times, but uh, I wouldn't change it, eh? it's, been a, it's been a good ride and um, I'm enjoying it. And long may that continue for the Sunshine Tour Musketeers. All for one and one for all. <laughs>